Hello guys and welcome to Empire Total War. Today we're going to be starting a new world domination campaign thanks to you guys voting for it in the latest polls. I appreciate you guys all getting involved. So let's select single player. We'll go to grand campaign. I'm going to scroll across to the faction of choice which is Prussia. So I've wanted to play Prussia for quite a while in Empire Total War. I've never done a campaign with them before, but they are one of two factions that start with only two starting regions, which is the least amount, I believe. The other being the Maratha Confederacy, which is another faction I'd like to try at some point. So maybe if you guys vote for another Empire Total War world domination in the future, we'll do that one too. But for now, we're going to be doing Prussia and we'll set the game victory condition over to world domination which is i believe empire total was the only game that allows you to set a world domination victory condition which is really cool by the way um but that's going to require us to hold 40 regions by the end of the year 1799 so we've got to control another 38 it's quite a lot We've set the campaign difficulty to very hard and battle difficulty to very hard of course that's the hardest difficulty you can play in empire total war um, but let's read the nation description. The Prussia itself has only been German since the 13th century, when the Teutonic Knights carved out a new Christian state on the Baltic coast. The present Kingdom of Prussia is a new state, the result of a union between the duchies of Brandenburg and Prussia, and it is a kingdom only because the current ruler, Elector Frederick III, has decided to improve his status to that of a king. In doing so, however, he has been careful not to offend the Holy Roman Emperor, the Archduke of Russia, of Austria, sorry, and calls himself the King in Prussia, not the King of Prussia. The form of words is a fig leaf. Frederick is king, and he is the king of a potentially powerful and influential Protestant nation, a center of gravity within the Germanies for all those who would look elsewhere for a lead than Catholic Austria. The Prussians believe, not without reason, that their virtues as a people can carry them through any trouble, martial discipline, sacrifice, a sense of order, but this sense of duty should not be confused with ignorance or intolerance, no matter what others may say. Prussians have always had to fight, but that has made them competent, not bloodthirsty. They have the potential to become a great continental power thanks to their martial traditions, many of which can be traced back to the Teutonic Knights. These could form the basis of a truly world-beating army. Under the right guidance, they could unite the German-speaking peoples into a single entity, dominate the Baltic, and perhaps extend their reach far beyond the confines of Central Europe. So that's what we're, of course, planning to do. <laughs> World dominate, of course. Uh, so let's jump in and start the game. Your first priority should be to research a superior military drill doctrine at the college in Magdeburg. Once in place, increase the size of your army and look to expand your territory to encompass the region of Silesia to the south. You could then try to link Brandenburg with historic East Prussia, currently separated by Polish-controlled West Prussia. If possible, maintain good diplomatic and trade relationships with fellow Protestant nations such as Britain, Sweden, Denmark and the United Provinces, whilst watching for the advance of Catholic France and Austria. They may try to claim your lands and those of your allies in the name of their corrupt church, and your capital will likely be their first target. My capital under threat. All right. So um, it's been a while since I played Empire Total War. The last time I played it was, in fact, when I did the world domination with England. I believe that took me just over 200 turns. I'm not sure how much that is in years. Uh, I think there is four turns per year because of the months or because of the seasons, sorry. Um, so yeah, we'll see how we get on. First things first, I need to probably look at diplomatic relations just to see what's going on around us. So we probably want to check probably Poland-Lithuania. 
They are allied with Denmark and Russia. They also are protectorates of Erland and Saxony. Okay. Uh, what about Sweden? Sweden. They actually don't have any allies. So Sweden could actually be an early target. Because if they have no allies, we could probably freely attack them. Like take Riga, take St. Petersburg, take Ebor and uh, Stockholm here. I'm not sure how strong they'd get. It'd probably be quite hard to actually take Stockholm because we don't actually have any ships at the moment. So getting over there would be a pain. But that's not ideal. Uh, we're nowhere near Spain. Uh, Russia, I don't really have to care about at the moment. Let's see who else is nearby. We have Great Britain, of course, who are actually friendly to us, probably because we are Protestant. And there's France and Austria. Okay. Minor nations, let's have a quick look at these. We are next to Hanover and Saxony. Any other minor nations nearby? Don't believe so. There is Delgava here, which is Kurland. Uh, but we know Kurland is a protectorate of Poland Lithuania. Uh, so let's just have a quick look anyway. Um, there's a lot of factions, isn't there? I completely forget how many factions there are in this game. You got Venice. We can actually trade with Venice if we wanted to. The 13 colonies. We can trade with the 13 colonies. That could actually be a decent idea, especially if we start trading with England as well. That could be worth quite a lot. Um, Savoy, we're actually quite friendly with because they are also... Actually, I don't know. I was going to say they're Protestant, but they're not. They're Catholic. I don't know why we're that friendly with them. Um, but I wanted to look for these factions. So Saxony... Actually, isn't Saxony also one yes, yeah, protector of Poland Lithuania? But now I look at it, maybe we could attack them if we wanted to attack Poland Lithuania because Poland Lithuania wouldn't be able to call in their allies unless they do it like retroactively, which I guess they might be able to, I don't know. And then Hanover is currently allied with Great Britain and Westphalia. So I don't think we'll be attacking Hanover, but Saxony is looking ripe for the taking. We should probably set up our trade first, though. So we'll probably want to trade with England. I think that's smart. Uh, because if we trade with anyone, like, south, like the Marathi Confederacy, for example, then our trade goes all the way down the coast here. And if we end up at war with, like, Spain or uh, France, then they're going to start raiding that, which would be a pain. So being friendly with Great Britain is fine, and we can probably potentially get some money for our trade so let's do that and we will ask for some money so we'll ask for 1000 okay they rejected that it's a shame hopefully we don't get like super bad modifiers <laughs> um from trading um or is it from uh, Diplomacy, sorry, because we're on very hard difficulty. That would be quite annoying. Um, but I will try again. Let's just go for like 600 or like 700 and see if that works. Oh, nice. Okay, that works. So we've got 700 cash from that. And we've got now the trade agreement, which is good. All right. So we have another trade route, I believe. It's going to give us 538 per turn, I believe. We go into the government. Yeah, trade income, 928. That's actually quite nice. All right, um, let's see. Who else? So we could trade with, like, Austria. That might be a good idea, because I'm thinking what we're going to do is attack Saxony. That will call in Poland. Now let's just have a look. These actually have quite a lot of dudes. It's all kind of trash units, though. Plus their local garrison. Our army here isn't that big though, so that could be very risky. Over here, Warsaw is actually completely undefended right now. Wow, okay. And we have an army. Is that in range? It is. Oh, okay. Are we going to do the one turn capital take? Because that is their capital, I believe. That would be crazy. <laughs> that would actually be really funny. Uh, I would probably want to leave some troops in Königsberg so that that can't be taken from me by these guys. Because this doesn't actually have that many dudes. There's only four militia there. 
like four armed peasants, I guess they would be. But I could take the line infantry, pop them into this army and go take Warsaw quite easy. Okay, well let's just keep looking at trade. Um, yeah, Maratha Confederacy and Mughal Empire is probably a bad idea. Um, I think, honestly, it makes sense to either trade with Denmark, but I don't think that's going to give us that much money. Um, or the 13 colonies. And I think the 13 colonies is probably a good shout. So we'll request a trade agreement with them. They also are friendly towards us. And we'll maybe ask for a bit of money from them as well. They'll give us 900. Nice, okay. That's good. I'll take it. How much does that give us in trade? 501. And the trade goes all the way up here, so that's well out of the way. That's really, really good. Nice. Any other trade we can do? No. I think we used up all of our ports. So the only other thing I can do is ground trading, right? Technically, I could trade with Saxony, but I'm probably going to attack them. So I guess we'll attack trade with Austria if they want me to. Uh, I might just ask for some money. Yeah, they'll give us 440 for a trade agreement. Cool. I'll take it. And that's going to give us a little bit of extra trade. So how much does that actually give us? 336. Wait. So do we not get the 523 from Great Britain? It maybe it's just like the 610 is ours, right? And then in this case the 336 is ours. So the total trade income is 1534. Hmm. Not sure. I'm sure you guys can clear that up for me in the comments. Uh, how are we doing for our ministers, actually? This is really good. Look at that. Wow. Minus 10% recruitment cost for all land units, plus 10% to land military technology research rate, and minus 10% upkeep for all army units. Crikey. All right. So we do want to set up our technology, so let's do that before I forget. Uh, we can get our military technologies pretty damn fast. Uh, getting canister shot would be quite nice for the 12 pound of foot artillery that way we don't have to rely on these demi cannons so much which are fixed artillery uh, we could also get ring bayonet which is very very useful it allows you to sort of engage in melee and then still be able to fire afterwards whereas i think at the start of empire if you use plug bayonets then you can't fire after you've attached them which is kind of annoying. Your infantry just kind of loses its range capability. So I think we'll go ring bayonet first and then maybe canister shots afterwards. All right. And I'm probably going to take my agent. Let's see. I'm not sure if there's much point being in Saxony since they don't have walls. So... I might head over here and let's start speeding things up a little bit. Uh, we'll put our gentleman into the town. Let's actually sped up that technology a little bit. Cool. And we bumped into an army of Austria. Okay. We've got the Gregorian calendar. Many Protestant nations in Europe, with the notable exception of Great Britain, have grudgingly adopted the reforms of the Julian calendar, first proposed in the Papal Bull of 1582 by Pope Gregory XIII. The new calendar seeks to correct the gradual drifting forward of the seasons and the feast of Easter under the old Julian calendar, which was 11 days longer than its civil equivalent. The Gregorian reforms removed the extra days and inserted a leap year, an extra day every four years to further correct the previous drift. All right. Uh, so we're up to like 10k cash already, which is nice from the trades. So I guess we're probably just going to put that into recruitment of infantry. Uh, is there a reason to upgrade anything else around here? What is this? That is a coaching in. Uh, we could whack that peasant farm in. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. No point in leaving that idle. Might as well get 
some population growth and wealth from it. So, yeah, that's cool. And then I think we do this attack. So I'm probably going to go for Dresden like straight away. I don't know if we're going to attack this turn. But that's going to call in Poland, Lithuania. And they are joined by them. And according to the order resolve, this is actually pretty close. But what I'm going to do is continue the siege here. I'm going to recruit a bunch more dudes. We can recruit a lot. Wow. Okay, that's, it. that's as much as it goes. Um, we can recruit four line infantry. And... Yeah. We can just add them to that and then make the attack. I feel like if I played it out now... I'd probably lose. I don't know, maybe not. It's a lot of, like, armed... Firelock armed citizenry. So, as long as I stayed out of the way of, like, the cannons, for example, then I, I'd probably be okay. I could probably try and snipe their general or something. Not sure. But with that done, we can definitely go for the attack on Warsaw. Because we're now at war with Poland Lithuania. Uh, I will further recruit more dudes here as well. Uh, so let's do that. And we could take tanks, but I think Warsaw's obviously a much better target for us. I'm not sure if these guys will be able to reinforce. If they can, that might be a bit awkward. We'll go for it. They can reinforce. Okay, but they won't be able to use their cannons. Great. So we'll continue the siege there. I'm probably going to bring this dude into this army. Or we could bring maybe the militia. No, I think it's fine to do, bring this guy. And then we make the attack. Alright. So we outnumber them. Well, I don't think... No, we don't outnumber them. Never mind. But we do have much superior troops. So let's jump in and fight this on the battle map. So I do not trust the auto-resolve. <laughs> At all. Also, it'd be nice to get into a battle uh, in the first episode. Here we go. The fight for Warsaw. Not quite the first thing I expected to be doing, but <laughs> I guess it works out. If we can take this from Poland, Lithuania, that's going to be big. Big, big. Here are our troops. This is such a pretty game. Like, goddamn. Like, this is such a lovely, lovely game. It really is. Like, the, the graphics have really stood the test of time. This is the definitive edition of Empire Total War, by the way. So, I guess, I don't know if that added any graphical improvements, but yeah, it just looks wonderful. Okay, so anyway, uh, we're probably just going to want to deploy our cannons right in the center, pretty much. And um, so there is that sort of lump of ground there. Maybe we can deploy down here, or maybe on the corner over here. Uh, what about over on this side? Oh, this might be a quite a nice place to put them. Yeah, if we deploy here. Oh yeah, that's going to give us a really nice line of sight. Okay, uh, and then we'll just deploy our dudes either side. So we'll grab these infantry. We'll spread them out as far as we can. Um, I think that's pretty much what you do until you get uh, fire by rank. We'll have our pikes kind of just chill with the cannons. And then I'll move my cav behind. Okay. And the deployment. Uh, we'll move these up. And we'll watch our cannons fire away. Uh, what do I want to hit? Is there anything here that I particularly want to kill? Don't think so. But it'd probably be best to kind of like shoot towards the center here. Because then units or shots that miss will hit other units. And it looks like their units are coming in at the back over there, which is kind of the opposite to where we were, so that's nice. Tell you what, these take a little while to reload, huh? Look at that beautiful sun, though. Oh yeah, there we go. That definitely hit. We only killed like a couple of men, though. We don't have canister yet, so we're probably extremely reliant 
on our line of tree. I'm going to actually pull back a little bit here because I don't want them to be in the trees when we start shooting them. Let's see if we can get some good shots in, please. Well, they did actually hit somebody. It's kind of scare tactics at the moment more than anything, I think. All right, I'm going to get my cab to kind of like start moving around the flank. Hopefully they kind of come at us one by one. It seems like they kind of are at the moment, which is good. They are only Firelock Citizenry after all. Ah, oh, looks like that little bump there is causing a bit of issues for my cannons. Frustrating. I'm probably going to make these melee and we're going to run them back off the cannons. Because I don't want the crew to get killed. Although it seems like that might have made them form up their formations. If they get in line of sight here, I would like my guys to start firing. And attempt to start like rushing forwards and forming up. So we get into range. Oh, that was a good hit. There we go. That's more like it. Uh, we're still not that close. Got to be a bit careful of this general bodyguard on the side. Have my cav ready to go. Start shooting at the general bodyguard. And we're going to shift back because I don't want to really get hit in the flank by those. It's all about manoeuvre. In the uh, Empire Total War, it really is. We can get a good hit in there, though. We can definitely chunk them. Take out the general. That'd be a big, big hit. Is he coming straight for us? I think he is. I'm going to let that fire. And then we're going to go melee, pull back. Okay. Now we're getting back on the cannons. And looks like we managed to do a good chunk of damage there with our initial volley. Didn't manage to get up a second volley though, look at that. We're too busy reloading. Alright, so we're probably going to want to target like the furthest unit. That's I think the only way that we're going to make these cannons actually hit something. I'm... Um, Almost tempted to like start pushing on them, but I feel like they're falling back because the other units are arriving. Don't tell me they're just going to stand just out of range. <laughs> Usually when like you have the artillery it kind of like forces them forwards. I don't think we really did a good job there of capitalizing on their disorderly formation. But we'll carry on with the firing regardless. And I think what might be a good idea is if I play around the houses maybe a little bit.
Because if we get into melee, we absolutely annihilate the firelock arm citizenry anyway. Especially with like the pikemen. So I'm gonna move them over that side. I think I might just leave the cannons. Because I feel like they're kind of going to put me in a bad spot when it comes to these uh, pikemen and militia moving up on us. They're not really being very helpful right now. So we're going to just move that lot away. To get these guys running. Trying to adjust that slightly. Mm, they might start shooting into the side of my formations. Gotta be careful. And they've kind of moved away from the town now. Looks like we're going to have our engagement. My left line is obstructed, so that's not ideal. Not quite sure how I'm going to work around that. Unless we take the initiative and move forwards, but kind of stretching me thin on the right side there. I think I'm just going to have my pikemen go and engage that unit of infantry. Because I think they're going to go for the house, for the building there. That or they're just kind of moving past it. If I charge them as well with the cav, I think we'll probably do all right here. I give this one unit down. Okay, they're shifting. Move. Start engaging them. Start shooting them. I need to move a little bit further forwards. Great. Wait, was that the leader? I think it was. Good. Are we going to want to wheel round? Let my cab just deal with them. 
Uh, we can go melee. I just plug bayonets and go. And they're just beating each other to death. Alright, we'll do the same with these guys. Plug bayonets, let's go. Go get into that pikeman unit. Plug bayonets. Dive into the back of these boys. Alright, oh, looks like we're mopping them up. One of my units is taking quite a lot of damage. Want to charge into the back of the regiment of militia? There we go. We got this charge coming in as well. Beautiful. There we go. Sandwiched. It's amazing how much maneuver that took <laughs> to get into this position, but we did it, and we didn't take that many casualties. I think one of my units took a bit of a beating, but otherwise we're alright. We'll end the battle there. That was a heroic victory apparently. Nice. Only 261 lost. We killed 1,108. Uh, well, we didn't kill that many in battle, but yeah. And my unit's got a lot of experience. That's great. Uh, what about this army? That's only left with cannons. Cool. So now we are dealing with the repair costs just to make sure that we don't really need to repair the cannon foundry, but we'll do it anyway. And then I can start recruiting from here as well. So that'll be great. Don't want to upgrade the roads just yet. Just need to get more and more dudes. And I should probably spend a couple of turns replenishing. Or... Potentially just these two for now. And then, like, if we do this, we can, like, merge them. And then we can merge that one into there. And then I can replenish that one. So that we maintain the veterancy. I think that's how it works in this game. It's very similar to medieval, I believe, in the way that veterancy works. When you actually replenish troops, I think it actually removes veterancy. But this unit of militia doesn't really matter. I might as well get that fixed up. Okay, so we've got another seven units of line infantry completing soon. Uh, we've managed to take Warsaw. I would say we're on to a winner. Let's get our good old Protestant missionary here into Warsaw so we can sort out the local population, get them converting. There probably is going to be rebellions that we have to deal with. Uh, we can exempt them from tax, but that's not really going to help that much right now, so I'm not going to really bother. Um, so, yeah. All right, that is pretty much our first turn done. We might get counterattacks here, but... Considering how well this went, I'm confident that we should be able to get rid of these with our three units of line infantry. Especially if I manage to like snipe this guy maybe with the cannons or something like that. Uh, the other concern I kind of have is that like Berlin is completely undefended right now, but we'll see how it goes as we move on to the next turn. There was definitely a lot of trials and tribulations the last time around when I played Empire. Uh, but let's move on. All right, so they offer to give me Jamaica. That's down here. Yep, 
I was going to say, I thought it was <laughs> like Rupert's land up here that it was like showing me, but no, it's uh, of course here. Yeah. Uh, uh, for East Prussia, which uh, we're obviously not going to. Uh, no, thank you. That's a very weird offer, not going to lie. Well, the other thing that we probably should do, actually, now I think about it, is create some trade. So they would like me to give them East Prussia for money, but that ain't happening. No, so thank you. Oh, now they're going to run around and raid the place. Of course they are. <laughs> I forgot that was the thing. <laughs> when the tiny little stacks run around in your lands and just destroy everything for the sake of it. <laughs> oh, it's frustrating. Because <laughs> it costs loads of money. <laughs> and when you do it to the enemy, they don't care. <laughs> All right, so as suspected, uh, we are under attack here. So we will, of course, jump in and fight this on the battle map. So I think as long as we kind of maneuver the same way we did before and get an advantageous engagement, then we should be fine. But they are technically the aggressor, so I'm not quite sure how it's going to go. They might be much more aggressive, and therefore it will make us struggle a little bit. We do have a nice hill here for the cannons, but I'm not sure how long the cannons will actually be useful for. We'll pop them up on the hill regardless, and uh, maybe we can hit their general. We will try, at least. And this, I guess this hill does give us an advantage in a defensive battle, so uh, that's handy. Alright, we'll keep these guys here. We'll keep them back. Oh, they do have cannons of their own, don't they? I'm going to have to be a little bit wary of that, because they might try and snipe my own general. We are behind the hill, so that's okay. Uh, right, we'll go straight for the general's bodyguard with those shots. And in the meantime, I'm actually going to fall back on this side. Because I don't want their cannons to shoot my infantry. Like that. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to fall back. I might try and shoot their cannons at some point, but we're kind of out of line of sight. Look at that hill. We actually have a very good position up there. Nice, and the hill's kind of saving us from the, the shots of their cannons, so that's great. Oh, oh, oh that was close. Oh, damn, that was a very close cannibal to the face for that general. we got, like, probably another couple shots before we actually have to do something. I'm gonna move my general out of the way. We hit the general unit at least to start. I'm tempted to double up on the left. Which I can do that with the pikeman. Yeah, we'll do that with the pikeman. If I just go in for this left unit, we can probably break them from left to right. I really want to get into range of these cav. Mm, this is not ideal. They're gonna fire. Yes. Okay. Good. <coughs> that should give us a advantage on the charge there. Okay, we're going to fall back now. 
And these can run forwards and engage. And we're probably going to socket bayonets and go in now that we've fired. Whereas here, hmm, I guess I could maybe charge downhill. How are we doing? Oh, it's pretty close. I'll fan of that. I mean, I'm just going to charge over to the militia. Here. Oh, my cavalry died. Okay, that's not good. I right, managed to break one unit here. Uh, let's take off guard. I <clears throat> uh, probably want to do the same here. That's probably because of the very hard bonuses, actually, that we lost that engagement. But hopefully we won't lose this engagement. That would suck. If we lose our general, we lose the game. We lose the battle. Just like straight up. Okay, did these guys suck at bayonets? And I didn't realize. Oh, my general died. We did kill their general, though. Alright, that's not as bad as it could have been. Right, let's come over here. Deal with these. Like, I might as well just use this cav to the best of my ability to just get flanking charges in here. Okay, let's go take care of their artillery. Losing my leader kind of sucks, but I will probably just get a new one. We have them on the run at least. She got quite a lot of ranks from this. Poor dude taking a cannonball to the face. Alright, go on Cav. Don't get cannoned in the face. Alright, good. Oh, 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 okay. <laughs> okay. Alright, well, hopefully we can win that. <laughs> Maybe not. I don't know if that's actually going to happen, but we can charge them with these guys afterwards if we need to. But how are these guys still fighting? Ah uh, yes, the invulnerable crew of artillery men take down all my elite horsemen. In we go, though. We don't actually have our bayonets on. I don't know if it's because we're locked in melee or what, but... Either way, should be able to take care of that unit nicely. 
Like, losing my general was unfortunate, but it didn't really affect the tide of battle, thankfully. Like, I was surprised how badly my cavalry lost, even though we managed to get a volley into their cavalry first. We outnumbered them. Maybe it was because they were more, much more concentrated. That might have been why. Uh, I do kind of want to continue the battle, but there's not really much point. Uh, because we're not going to really catch up to anyone. But we got the heroic victory, so that's good. I'll take it. Uh, we lost 352, they lost 948. So we're going to be able to take this nice and easy next turn. Alright, Tilsit was raided, so was Krakow. Uh, I don't know how to say that. My farmland was. <laughs> Letter of Domans from Poland. Workers on strike in Poland, of course. Like, we took their capital, so they don't really like us very much. Alright, but we are going to take Saxony and... I guess what I'm probably going to do is recruit a new general here. So let's just do that. And we'll just go ahead and auto resolve it. Cool. So plus one morale in battles. Very nice. Nation destroyed Saxony. The first of many. A heroic death for Leopold von Anhalt to Saal. <laughs> he does, died very, very early. We got all of the good old recruitment done. And now we have war between the United Provinces and Spain. Okay, cool. And Julian calendar. Um, I didn't mean to actually close that. I think that was a new message that I didn't see. Anyway, uh, from here, we of course are going to take tanks. And I'm going to want to take out this army. So we'll probably just take these guys and go say hi over here. And take them out. <clears throat> and then we'll go take this. And we'll continue the siege. And I think I might just make this another army. Because we might just split up here and just go take all of this land very quickly. Uh, so let's grab another general. Oh wow, he is a good general. And he can make that attack. That way he gets a trait. A galloper. Alright. And we'll fix that up. Cool. And in our first turn, we've gone from two provinces to five. <laughs> I would say that's a good start. <laughs> and unfortunately, guys, it has been my time. So, yeah, off to a very, very good start as Prussia. And I'm probably going to look to get deep into the Poland-Lithuanian lands and just sweep up all of this. And then we'll likely go through Austria, I think. And then I might want to stay friends with the Ottomans for the time being. Whilst I go and take out maybe Sweden. Because Sweden doesn't have any allies. So they would be an easy take. The Ottomans also don't really have any allies either. So there's that. But yeah. I would say that was a fantastic start to this campaign. Apart from obviously losing my general. Uh, but it's okay. He got replaced by somebody a lot better. <laughs> that is it. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. And I will see you in the next episode. Goodbye. Yeah,